What up, YouTube? You already know Big Lou tapping back in with what it do with Big Lou and MZR2, baby, baby. You guys already know I just posted it. These two are back there snoring. We just got done. We just, we're just about to leave the bully show right now. So this is just from two hours of them walking around. It really wasn't a whole two hours walking around because the last, probably first hour we walked around a little bit. We really couldn't get too far in the show. So I didn't really give too much clips, but it was majority it was all micro and exotic bullies, um, Frenchies, um, English Bulldogs. Um, we seen, including Champ and Daisy, we seen maybe 10 total uh, XLs. Um, and so the XLs gravitated towards each other. So I was back there chilling with a couple cats. Uh, um, one had his chocolate or excuse me his black tri female and the other dude had us a, uh, a merle boy a big uh, with a blue fawn merle boy um and we were chopping it up talking you know about the dogs and such uh it was about maybe eight to ten total standards which are the classic standards are the same height it's just the standards are a little more thicker than the classics which are i want to say like 17 ancient 17 18 inches tall for a male um, actually, I think they go up to 19, 17 to 19 inches, I believe for a male and females, probably 16 to 18, something like that. It's close. If I, it might not be exact, but it's close. Um, like I said, it was majority, uh, fr uh, Frenchies, uh, English bulldogs, micros and, and, and exotics, which are way different than, than what I have. These are XLs. Oh. I got a lot of com uh, compliments on them. A lot of people thought Daisy was a boy. Um, I got asked if if, uh, if uh, Champ was a press of Canario. That's like the second or third time I've been asked that. Uh, but I got a lot of compliments on on Champ for his uh, his color, his red sable with the black mask, meaning the you know his muzzle's black, his mouth. Um, because a lot of times the dogs will just be red or sable, brown sable or red sable. They won't have that black mass. So that's what separates him from the other uh, red or sable dogs. Um, and then I got a, a lot of compliments on his feet, his paws being so big. Um, people complimented on Daisy's head, and they thought he was a she was a male. And I, you know, I had to tell him he was she was a female. She's only seven months old. Uh, but other than that, this ain't really my cup of tea right here. I like to see the XLs. The bigger, you know, my size dogs or even standards would be cool. You know what I mean? Or even some pockets, but these were all the real small ones. Um, but anyways, it, it was a good experience for them, for the dogs, because this is the first time they've ever been to something like this. Um, they did pretty, really well, except for when Daisy got a little spooked when I got her by. She seen one of the drones flying around. And she got a little scared. It came down low and she kind of pulled back. And, you know, why? luckily for me, I was standing. I wasn't walking. But she didn't want to move. I had to pet her a little bit to, you know, coach to kind of coach her out of that. And then when we got up by the speakers where the entrance was, she started pulling a little bit. She didn't want to go in, which the speakers sound like shit, uh, you know, really distorted sound. So if it's hurting my ears, imagine what it does to them. Their their hearings and you know smell and their senses are way modified compared to ours. But um, this video ain't gonna be about that. I just I started it with that. Today is March twenty fifth. It's going down. Uh, el bandera rojo or la bandera ro I don't know if it's el bandera el bandera rojo or el bandera roja I think it's el bandera rojo the red flag right the Mexican monster some people if you don't know Benavides his father's Mexican his mother is I believe Ecuadorian Ecuadorian or Bolivian I think it's Ecuadorian a lot of times he'll go in there with three flags. He'll go in there, or at least two flags. And I've seen him go in there with three flags too, with the American flag, the Mexican flag, and the Ecuadorian flag or the Bolivian flag. Um, Mike Tyson gave him the nickname, the Mexican monster. They're fighting tonight. Him and Sweet Hands, Cater Plant. A lot of bad blood between these guys. Also the family, the Benavides family with Plant. Um, I'm not really sure what was all said. I've heard different things, uh, you know, I've heard Plant say that the father, and they were making a lot of bad comments about his deceased daughter, which I don't know if it's true or not. If it is, it's kind of fucked up. Um, but uh, David Benavides, the reason I'm making another video about this, because I seen him the last press conference before the fight, man, this dude is shredded. 
you know, he's not, you know, because he used to be fat when he was a kid, right? Chubby kid, um, he's shredded. He's in the best shape of his life. So I heard uh, Showbiz say that it's either, either he's legitimately in the best shape of his life or he's, uh, uh, what was that word he used? He's uh, basically uh, like weight drain, basically. And it's going to either hurt him or he's in the best shape of his life. Nobody's ever seen ben David Benavides like that before. So, you know, it really stuck out. He's got a straight up six pack. He got a new, I believe he got new members of his team as far as his uh, his, uh, his endurance coach and his uh, probably his nutritionist. And he's probably got a personal chef now. Different things that these boxers do when they get big, you know, when they start making it big, um, making money, you know, they're able to hire different members for to put together, you know, their team. Um, uh, he's shredded, man. You know, Kayla Plant was clowning because, you know, Kayla, Kayla Plant's like, I'm, I'm always like this, you know. You know, he tried to clown him, but, you know, Kayla Plant, I can see the fight going two ways. I can see Kayla Plant going in there, doing his thing, boxing. You know, he I heard that he asked for a bigger ring. That's what Jose Benavides Sr. said. I don't know how true it is, but if it is true, there's a reason, there's a method behind all madnesses, right? He probably asked for that bigger ring so he can, you know, box, Stick and move, you know, two, three jabs, two, three jabs at a time, you know what I mean? To keep him off because David, David throws high volume punches and he, and not to mention he has a lot of power behind it. Um, so I could see, you know, I could see plant, I could see kid plant, you know, doing his thing, man. And, and, and frustrating Benavides, but at the same time, I see Benavides coming with, get back there, man. You ain't even supposed to be up here. I can see Kayla Plant, I mean, uh, Benavides coming with a lot of volume, you know, a high volume of punches with the power behind it and literally trying to take his head off because he does not like them. Um, they don't like each other. Uh, you know, I don't know if that that's going to be a good thing or will it perhaps hurt him? And I guess what I mean by if it hurts him, it obviously is going to depend on how Caleb Plant defends that. Um, if he just sits there like Dave, uh, um, Lemieux did, uh, David Lemieux did, he's in big trouble. Um, if he sticks and moves and fights like he did with Anthony Durrell, um, then he's in good shape. But the thing with, with, uh, Caleb Plant is a lot of times he'll do well the first six, eight rounds. And then he runs out of gas, um, like he did with Canelo, which Canelo ended up dropping him, you know, knocking him out. And I believe Benavides punches harder than, than Canelo because he's more of a natural super middleweight, uh, Canelo for you're talking David Benavides, six foot two. Compared to Canelo, who's like what five eight and a half, five nine tops, uh, body stature, he's really like a, a welterweight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, now you're talking about a guy six two who's a little bit taller than you, um, who don't like you, that punches hard as hell, and he throws a lot of punches, and he's pretty fast. David Benavides is pretty fast for being called a fat boy, but that's the thing though. I know a few people myself uh, that are he heavier people that got fast ass hands. God damn it. What the fuck you doing? And that hurt, boy. Yeah, he put his claws in my arm right now. Like, he just stretching all, oh, like, no big deal. Oh, my gosh, that hurt. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so <laughs> uh, these guys did good today, though. They did good. They did really well today. I'm proud of these two guys. These My dogs, uh, they did well for being so many people moving around, back and forth, dogs all around, speakers blaring loud. They did really well. Um very proud of him. Uh, but yeah, so this fight can go, uh, you know, it can go either way. I'm really believing that Benavides is going to win. Um, I think David Benavides is going to knock him out by eighth or ninth round. Um, but don't sleep on Caleb Plant, man. Uh, they don't call him sweet hands for nothing, you know, and, and I know David was clowning. Oh, you only got 13 knockouts, but Hey, that ain't always, you know, he, he obviously he's not as hard a puncher as you, David, but, you know, Kayla Plant, it's called Sweet Hands for a reason. He can box. You know, he's got skills. The white boy got skills, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, you know, uh, it's going to be a good fight. Either way, uh, this is Kayla Plant's probably, well, probably second big fight as far as money-wise. The first one, obviously, was a Canelo fight. Um, well, actually, probably his third good payday because Darrell was a two-time ex-champion, too. Um Benavides is probably his first big, big money fight. I think Lemuel, he made some decent money. 
and he fought Darrell too. He probably made some decent money with Darrell, but you're talking making you know a few hundred thousand dollars to now probably cracking a million on this fight. I would say at least uh, if he didn't crack at least a million on this fight, he had to make at least eight hundred thousand, which I'm pretty sure I'm off on those numbers. Um, Caleb Plant, you know, they both live comfortable lives. Uh, you know, they take care of their family. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I think that uh. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking Davey's going to knock him out some t- if uh, if not a legitimate KO, a TKO where the ref gets in it because he's taking too much punishment and he's not protecting himself and not throwing back. Um but on the on the flip side, I can see Plant going the distance and Plant winning a decision, a split decision. Uh you know, uh I can't see that. I can't see Plant going in there and utilizing and sticking to the game plan. And I'm pretty sure his game plan is to stay outside uh, and utilize that jab to the fullest. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if he throws two, three jabs combination, you know, uh, two, three jab sets, you know, to try to set up a hook or an uppercut or an overhand right or something. You know what I mean? Uh, I can definitely see that. So we'll see what happens. I can see him also frustrating the shit out of David and David end up getting like kind of like how his brother acted the last fight with Danny Garcia, where he gets frustrated and he starts talking shit and all that. Um, I still, I do believe that there's a difference between the two brothers as far as in the ring, uh, you know, in the amateur days, Jose was top dog, you know, top, the top Benavidez kid. Um, but now it's changed. And I believe David is, you know, obviously two time, uh, WBC super middleweight champion. Um, and he's also, I think he's currently still considered the interim champ until Canelo fights, uh, Ryder, um, Pelo de Gato, Pelo de Gato, John Ryder, like, uh, punch drunk says, uh, so yeah, I can see that going both ways, but I'm really, I really believe that Benavides will have his hands raised, uh, tonight and it'll be a, uh, it'll be a TKO or KO in the eighth or ninth round, uh, on the, on the UFC thing. Um, I didn't do a UFC video because there's only one person on that whole card with the prelims included. And that's at least 10 fights that I've heard of. And that's Holly Holmes. I don't know who Vera is. I've never even heard of him. Uh, I believe he's from either Venezuela, Colombia, or Ecuador, or Bolivia. Bolivia, Ecuador, Colombia, because uh, he's got that that flag. Or Venezuela. Uh, so yeah, I don't I don't know nothing about these guys. So I'll I'll wait till uh, UFC 287 comes. Izzy rematch with the. Uh, I don't know if that's the next one or if they if they got another one bef- besides that. But as far as the numbers. UFC 287 is the next one, and it's Izzy and uh, uh, Adesanya and uh, Pereira again uh, rematch. So I'll definitely comment on that one and do a video on that one. Uh, and I'm looking to get back and finish up these profiles that I started doing on sports players. Uh, kind of got sidetracked when I got the bullies and started talking more about the bullies. Uh, but anyways, with that being said, Big Lou, Daisy, where you at, Daisy? Daisy's over there in the window. Chance back there sleeping. Look at him. He's burned out. Can't see his head, but these guys were snoring a minute ago. I Go check out the shorts. They're both snoring. <laughs> I mean, loud. You know what I mean? All right, peeps. I'm gone.